Hello and welcome to the fourth and final installment of learning about Native Americans in Texas with your teacher, Miss Abubakar. Welcome back and let's get started. So, the mountains and basins, our final region. The mountains and basins lies farthest west of all the Texas regions. It is the most arid region of Texas, receiving very little annual rainfall. The geography is diverse, with several mountain ranges, plateaus, and basins, which are similar to valleys. Tribes in this region tended to be sedentary, as it was difficult to move in the mountains. They were hunters and gatherers, and they traded with neighboring tribes. So let's read below and learn about two of the tribes in this region. There are the Jumano and the Tigua. So first, we will look at the Jumano. We see a picture here of a Jumano man and a woman, and we might notice most that they have painted stripes on their skin. Pretty cool. So the Jumano. The Jumano were not one tribe, but actually three separate tribes of natives sharing similar languages and cultures. The mountains and basins Jumano were buffalo hunters and traders. When the Spanish arrived to Texas, the Jumano acted as middlemen trading between the Spanish and other tribes. The Spanish referred to the Jumano as naked people because they often wore very little clothing. When they wore clothing, it was made of tanned or softened animal skins. They wore moccasins on their feet made of animal skin. The Jumano were also known as the striped people because they painted or tattooed stripes on their bodies. Men cut their hair short, decorated it with paint, and left one long lock to which the feathers of various birds might be tied. Women may have worn their hair long or in braids. Some Jumano were nomadic and lived in teepees. Numa nomadic Jumano hunted with a bow and arrow or wooden clubs. Sedentary Jumano lived in either sticks and reeds, while others lived in houses, Pueblo houses made of adobe bricks. The Jumano were successful traders with other tribes and later with the Spanish when they arrived. Jumanos supplied corn, dried squash, beans, and other produce from farming villages in exchange for pelts, which are animal skins, meat and other buffalo products, and foods such as pinion nuts, mesquite beans, and cactus fruit. So pause a moment, go to your assignment B, and fill in the notes for Jumano. And welcome back. Here we are again with our final tribe, the Tigua. The Tigua are known as a Puebloan tribe because they lived in adobe pueblos in West Texas and modern day New Mexico. Adobe is made from clay bricks dried in the sun. The word Pueblo means town in Spanish. When the Spanish explorers arrived, they called the Tigua towns Pueblos. The Tigua lived in approximately 13 different villages made up of about 200 adobe houses. The Pueblo houses were arranged like apartments, with many families living in one Pueblo home. The Tigua speak a language called Tiwa, which is now nearly extinct. The Tigua established a settlement or a town called Isleta del Sur Pueblo. They also called this home Pueblo Gran Quivira. The Tigua were farmers. The women planted crops like corn, beans, and squash, which we of course know are the crops known as the Three Sisters because they grow so well together. Since the mountains and basins are very dry and arid, the Tigua always lived near rivers so their crops could have water. The largest river they lived near was the Rio Grande. You might remember it as the border between Mexico and Texas. The Tigua also got food by hunting. The men hunted deer, rabbits, antelope, and bears. The women and children also gathered berries. They stored their food in beautiful ceramic pots. The Tigua were known for their beautiful pottery. The Tigua also grew cotton, which they used to, uh, to make clothes. They also used leather and fur on their clothing. The men wore breech cloths in the summer months, and the Tigua held religious ceremonies and dances before planting crops. The Tigua Indians are the only Pueblo tribe still living in Texas today. 
There are over 4,000 members of the Tigua tribe alive in the U.S. today. So let's look at these pictures before we do our assignment. Um, the first picture is a really striking photo of um, a Native American man, a Puebloan man, dressing um, all in his beautiful clothes and dancing. Here is a pot made by the Tigua. Here you see um, a young woman pushing something in this big dome thing. It's like a, an oven, like a furnace, and she was probably cooking something in there or firing a pot. Here is an art depiction of that exact same thing. Here is the official seal of the Tigua Indians with an eagle and eagle feathers. Here are women um, and men dressed in a, um, traditional clothing of the Tigua or Jumano people and having a ceremony. Here are images of a family in front of their pueblo. This is a really beautiful tunic made with beads and um, colored beads and yarn and strings hanging from it. Here we see a pueblo. Um, here we see a grass kind of hut with a family in front. Here we see a cave painting. Here is a picture of the land that is Texas today. You kind of see the southern shape of it when you look at the Rio Grande. And there's a shaded part where the Tigua and Jumano lived. Here are the Jumano people hunting. We see their stripes on their skin and we see why they'd be called the naked people. And we're back to the beginning. Um, I highly recommend that you watch the video about the mud people. Um, it's about modern day Tigua living near like El Paso. And it's pretty interesting and it's not too long. So watch that video. And then go answer your final questions about the Tigua. And then you're done. Woo, check all your work. Make sure it's all finished. That you have um, two facts if you're in my academic classes. And three facts if you're in my advanced. Um, and then make sure that my advanced kids also have the questions answered at the bottom. Good work. Ah!